Hey everyone, welcome to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm Ian Fuego here. And we're back with another set of comic reviews. Fuego, what's the first one we're doing today? The first one that I'm very stoked to be talking about is the third volume in the Aliens Dark Horse comic books, Earth War. And what do you got, amigo? Today I've got yet another one that one of the viewers of the show by the name of Russ Lippett sent us. It was actually created as both a graphic novel and a motion comic, so we're going to talk about both here. And that is called The Showdown, Volume 1. So Fuego, let's dive into Aliens Book 3, which incidentally might be the last Aliens book we do for just a little while, uh, but we will be getting back to the coverage as the new movie approaches and as the year goes on. Indeed, yeah. It's the 30th anniversary of the second Aliens film, and these books basically follow the story right afterwards. We already covered the first and the second. As with the first two, this one was slightly altered name-wise. Yeah, when we had Billy and Wilkes, they were replacing Newt and Hicks because, you know, they had to retcon some stuff after Alien 3 went and messed up the continuity, but in Earth War, you basically have Ripley finally officially showing up. You have her at the very tail end of book two. This one explains what happened and why she wasn't in those first two volumes. She was essentially plucked right out by the company as Hicks and Newt were sleeping, and they sent her back to LV-426 because they're like, yeah, they may have blown most of the place up, but that derelict ship was still there. And there in was still what was actually, in my opinion, kind of a ripoff straight of aliens it was oh, yeah. it was ripley being sent in with an entirely new group of marines that didn't know what they were in for yeah it was a bit of a point of a contention i'm gonna have yeah kind of a bit of unoriginality by mr mark for Hyden. i loved that first volume so much and then you know how much i enjoyed the artwork in the second volume but this one sam keith's artwork didn't do it for me the storytelling was very rehashed way down to the fact that Newt ends up finding a young girl who is running around on Earth, which is now filled with aliens, and Newt wants to go save her, and so, yeah, not exactly the most original thing, but the one interesting thing that they do do is that they go to the alien home world, and Ripley has this big plan to capture the Mother Queen, you know, the mother of all of the aliens, you know, and they're, they're going to essentially use her as bait, take her back to Earth, Get all of the aliens that have infested Earth near those nukes that were supposed to be set off at the end of the first book, and that's how they're gonna essentially exterminate the aliens on Earth. But just too many recycled plot points and just too much unoriginality for a series that I thought started so strongly. I agree. You know, quite honestly, uh, moving beyond this, I actually recently acquired all of the aliens omnibuy or omnibuses. I do yeah. not know what is correct. <laughs> I was enjoying the idea of them continuing the part two story so much mm -hmm. that I pretty much dove in and I was like, yeah, yeah, let me get all of it. What I'm excited for now is no longer the continuation of Newt Hicks and Ripley's story. Unfortunately, it was done sort of in such a subpar way throughout these series that I'm ready to move on and see some completely new stories dealing with the Xenomorphs. So that is possibly the best way to explain how I felt about this particular volume. Yeah. However, I will say that I definitely enjoyed the artwork more than Fuego did, judging by the feeling I'm getting based on what he said. I'm a huge fan of Sam Keith. He's uh, been an old favorite of mine ever since uh, The Max uh, back in the 90s. Um, that comic book that was then turned into MTV, a liquid television right? Yeah. Right, MTV show. Uh, and then he's done various Batman uh, stories along with uh, some other things. I, I can't recall exactly quite offhand. I know he's done one called Four Women, some other lesser known uh, Sam Keith books, but his art style has always remained the same. It was very interesting as an experiment uh, for me as a reader to see what Sam Keith could bring to the aliens lore. And it was interesting is kind the of the best way I can put it, unfortunately. I mean, the thing is, Sam Keith's artwork isn't meant to be scary. Like, no. I, I think he wasn't. was trying, yeah. but it wasn't coming across. There I, I, there wasn't the graphic gore. Like, there was some gore, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, like, as effective, I think, as the more realistic artwork in book two was. It was mostly his representation of Ripley that I just didn't like. The way he yeah. drew the character, just she Drew, like, an 80s model, almost. Yeah, like, with, with, like, with a the weird short crop type yeah. hair type thing. And, like, her lips were always, like, teeny tiny mm -hmm. and, and always lipsticked up and it was just a weird portrayal of this character a little that more sort feminine. of symbolized feminism yeah. as opposed to femininity absolutely you know what i mean yeah by by the second movie she had become less feminine and when you got to the third movie when she shaved off her hair and way everything. less so for them to almost like backtrack with her appearance wise it's very strange yeah it just didn't make as much sense and then it, it doesn't help with the unoriginality of the story when it started so strongly with the first volume and the world building and expanding on you know just the, the alien mythology 
I just felt like the volumes got progressively worse. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, I agree with you. So, you guys, if you're planning on reading the Aliens books, look at it this way. <laughs> Both Volume 2 and Volume 3 were only four issues long. Mm -hmm. So, they're not going to take a lot of time to get through. If you want to be the completest, I would say go for it. Again, and if you're like me and like Sam Keith, you might appreciate it even more. Honestly, the first book is the one that I think was the best, which is why for the 30th anniversary, they just put it back out. The Lux hardcover, they switched the names back to their, you know, the original contacts, which mm -hmm. I thought was good. And so that is the one to seek out. With a name like Earth War, I think my hopes were really, really high. And as you pointed out to me after you read it, you're like, it wasn't really much Earth War going no, on. No, no, it was very, it yeah. took, the last issue took place partially on Earth. And, mm -hmm. and even then it was like, this is not what I would consider an Earth War. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although they did expand a little bit more so on just the whole telepathic link that uh, Ripley had with, you know, not the just the, the aliens, yeah. but the, the engineer as well, and how yeah. they, they verify that, no, it wasn't distress call per se. It was just like a warning that they were sending out. And, yeah. and, and it wasn't even meant for them. But there is some weird terraforming of Earth that starts going on because there is that engineer ship, which is hovering in the orbit, and they kind of tie up the loose ends with that story in a very small Dark Horse Presents or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was that. a Dark Horse Presents, yeah. which uh, we'll get to. I think maybe we should do a little review on oh, yeah. that little short there, and that'll also complete uh, the first omnibus so mm -hmm. we can wrap up the Alien coverage, uh, like I said, in a little while here. But I think that's going to cover Aliens 3 Earth War, right? Indeed, yeah. And honestly, a lot of the stories that they told after that had nothing to do with the film characters. Much stronger than this, trust me. Cool. So. Well, I'm excited then. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep optimistic. <laughs> so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and move into The Showdown, which was written by Russ Lippett, and the art was done by Tony Giraldi Brown. Awesome artwork. <laughs> yes. That is definitely one of the shining things about this volume. Now, basically what this is about is the premise is Satan, once in a millennia, will hold a race in hell in which any creature residing in hell can enter and try and win their freedom, right? If they if they win the race, they win their freedom. Sort of death race-ish, right? If Big you're going to liken it to anything else, it's uh, death race was the same thing. Inmates got to race for their freedom in a, in a race that would end in people's demises. Indeed. And uh, yet in this, you see just about every kind of creature imaginable, which indeed. is what's cool there's about Indeed. There's vampires, there's werewolves, there's... Uh, Freaking zombies, there's what Frankenstein else? Frankenstein type guys, there's like a half human, half pig hybrid, there's skull faces. clowns, there's yeah. a guy called the freak that's who knows what yeah. he's wearing, like a cow skull on his face. Skull faces were my favorite though because they were obviously rip offs of the misfits, you know, they were called uh, the Miss Cheeps and uh, they had the devil <laughs> lot going on and everything, and then there was like the crimson hooded dudes along with them. So, I mean, very original with just the various personalities involved in the race and all of them being different and distinctive. You know, with the premise like that, Satan holds a race that people can, you know, win their freedom out of hell or creatures can win their freedom out of hell. That sounds awesome, right? Totally. So I was ready to go and I started reading and it's like, okay, team one is this and they get a couple of pages, right? And then team two is this and they get a couple of pages, right? And then team three is this and they get a couple of pages, right? And then team four is this, and they get a couple of pages, right? Yeah. And if you see the problem, is that was my problem as well. Pretty much nothing else All happened. it was <laughs> was 13 teams being introduced to us over the course of the first volume. Now, I guess if I had known that going in, I would have been less frustrated by it. Yeah. However, it does it need to be said that it was frustrating when you get a volume of something that advertises a race, and there's no actual race going on. It's just a little bit of character development for each of the teams and not even so much that I'm really, you know, I'm not really attracted to any particular team. I don't really care about any particular one based on the three or four pages that each of them got. Yeah. So I think that's a little bit of an issue when you're taking an entire volume to set up a thing. I don't know. I personally, I just think it was packed with too many teams trying mm -hmm. to be introduced and it left me wanting the thing that I thought I was going to get. Yeah. That said, Let's talk about the artwork, Fuego. Oh, the artwork was fantastic. And, you know, but one more story thing please, I can please, point please, out is sorry. that there, there was at least a little bit of a love story type thing going on, you know, with one of the zombie girls. And it was like a Betty Page type. And you've got the Frankenstein type guy. And that was cool. A little star-crossed lover kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But that's about the extent of it. You know, although being, you know, a hopeless romantic at heart, I did kind of dig that. But, yeah, the artwork is where this really, really shines because so distinctive with each of the creatures. They look fantastic. And the thing that I liked a lot about the motion comic was that they gave a musical flair to each of these teams and it almost gave them even more personality. Where have I been? 
and not as hungry as me. Get to that square! Go, Billy I agree, and that is where we should go ahead and move into the motion comic, because what I was talking about was specifically the graphic novel. The motion comic, in my opinion, is definitely where the showdown shines. It adds flair, and it adds style. There's interesting motion, it sort of presents things to you in a much more interesting way. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I didn't mind the fact that it was only introductions. It, the motion comic takes 20 minutes to get through, so it's not very long. Yeah, it's a lot more streamlined than the comic itself. I, I wouldn't say do it instead of the comic. It's almost like a supplemental piece mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. I'd say check out both. But... Well, it also helps to tell you where you're supposed to look and stuff. On the page, it looked a little bit muddy and scratchy at times, and it is the same artwork on screen, but when you're having it sort of directed for you, mm -hmm. it makes it a little easier easier to comprehend yeah. and the only issue I had in that sense is without having word bubbles mm -hmm. like there were in the in here you can see there's there's actual text bubbles inside here the motion comic does not have those and so sometimes it's a little bit tough to tell exactly who is talking while the thing is being presented to you in the motion comic but it's not like it breaks it or anything like that oh so. not at all but I, I think some of the dialogue could have been turned up just a wee bit in the mix at times you know especially mm. since there's other sound effects and you know bits of music like little cues that you know cut in and cut out and so I thought the voice acting was decent enough but there were certain characters that shine a little bit more with personality than others now bearing all that in mind I do also have to say that I am very much looking forward to the next volume of this because I you think to that's race. gonna be the money you know <laughs> we're about to actually start this thing and we're gonna see what happens with all these characters so I think what he might have done is he came up with this idea I'm talking about Russ and, and I'm not speaking for him this is what I perceive perhaps to have happened he had this idea for a really cool race and he's like well let's get people invested in all the racers right all the people involved in the race we need to know who they are I can't just start with the race yeah. so I think that's what happened he's like okay well the first volume will be the introduction of the racers the second volume will be the race it's a sound train of thought However, it's tough to rope people in to a thing about a race when there's absolutely no race in the first volume. Just to contrast that a little bit though, I, I feel like if you're just having people racing around, there's little room for character development in that, so I agree. you did have to lay the groundwork at least for all these different teams, but I, I felt just like you that there were too many teams, and in the motion comic, they actually expanded on some of the sub-teams even further. They didn't have names for like the clown team or for the Nazis, they called them the Fourth Reich, and so they actually gave those guys names in the motion comic, so mm -hmm. it's even a little bit more in that aspect to have to keep track of, so. Yeah, yeah, so it's a little bit tough, but as we said, we are looking forward to the next volume, yeah. and I think, honestly, if you have both volumes to read back to back, mm -hmm. it'd be a great reading experience. Totally. I, I totally. would totally imagine. There's you know, loads of potential here. Yeah, we are absolutely. not slogging on anything. Man. Absolutely. It's just, <laughs> we were just hoping for the race. So yeah. that's about all we can say about that. But Indeed. ultimately, the artwork was fantastic and the writing was good too. Oh, yeah. It was just the way the ultimate story is being presented left a little to be desired. But again, good writing, great artwork. Definitely check out the showdown, you guys. Get the motion comic for sure, get the graphic novel if you can, and then make sure you stay on top of Russ's uh, social medias to find out when you can get volume two, because I know I'm gonna be on top of that. Indeed. That's gonna do it for today's comic book reviews, you guys. Thanks very much for watching. Let us know in the comments below if you guys are gonna wanna seek out either of these and what you thought about what we thought of it. Yeah, and also <laughs> if you have a recommendation for a horror comic you would like us to check out, please toss that our way because we are always looking for new stuff to scope out. Absolutely, so thanks very much for watching, you guys. I've been Cecil Laird. Gracias, I've been Jaime Fuego. And until next time, remember, stay, stay scared. scared.